Good morning, everybody. Victor here and Brookie here. Good morning. And today is a very special day because we are on this beautiful 280 Twin V. So Brookie and I have been talking about getting a bigger boat for a long time now. We want to do Bahamas trips, just get something bigger for the family. So we reached out to Sundance of Pompano Beach, which is our local Twin V dealer. Lo and behold, here we are on this beautiful boat. So we're going to see what this thing's made of. We're going to do some planer fishing today, some drift fishing, some kite fishing. Let's get after it. What we're starting out our morning doing is trolling these guys known as planers. Well, that's the planer down there on the floor. But what we have here, we got a little sea witch skirt, a little squid, and a little mylar. You got two hooks. And what this is going to do is almost act like a little bait fish. So if you look at that underwater, this skirt is going to help the bait from getting washed out. It also has a little flash. And this is going to be tracking through the water. That planer is going to get it down there about 50 feet and we're going to do two. We're going to do one on this side, one on that side. The resistance of the water is going to pull your line down like this and the bigger the planer the deeper it's going to get. So fish like wahoo kingfish um, when they're down deep it's a really good way to present your bait. So that is exactly what we're starting with today. You got the weight side facing you and I have a, a release system to where you don't have to hand line the fish in. So we take half of our snap swivel right here, clip it like that. So I'm gonna let the first one we put out, we're gonna let out pretty far. Because since these are gonna be suspended down, you don't want them to get tangled. So you want one far and one short. The one on the right's gonna be the, sh the long one. So this planer's bigger, we're gonna keep it shorter, but it's gonna go deeper. All right, we're fishing. So what we're going to be doing is just kind of zigzagging, going in and out of like 100, 300 feet of water. If you see a rip or something, you see birds working, just looking for any signs of life. Just basically going to go from Hillsborough Inlet to Boca Inlet and try to find the fish and get on a bite. And like usual, the weatherman lied and it's much rougher out here than they said it was going to be, but that's okay. We thought it was going to be calm today and it's, there's a short little chop, which is kind of annoying, but... Like the worst. It is the worst possible conditions. But this is the best. If you're ever going to see trial a boat, pick the nastiest day you plan on fishing in that boat because that's when you're going to test to see if you like it. If it's going to ride good, if it's going to be stable, if it's going to drift well, you don't want to go out when it's calm. Every boat's going to be good when it's calm. This is the perfect day to test out a boat. Just got our first bite and it's really... You got to really pay attention to the rods because these are not screaming runs usually. Sometimes it's just much as the rod going like this. It's a little tap. And if you don't hook them at first, you could be trolling with this. So it looks like whatever ate this ate it right behind the hook and cut it in half. But that could have been our suspect right there, Mr. Wahoo. We're, we're trying out here. It's, it's rough. It's rocking and rolling. There's seaweed everywhere. We're constantly getting seaweed off the planer. So we're working for our fish today. We only had that one bite. Um, it's just been a lot of seaweed. And it's not really ideal to troll when it's this rough, but it was nice to be able to see how the boat runs when it's rough, you know, trolling at an uncomfortable speed. You're trolling at like eight knots and uh, you can't really get up on plane. But you know what? We still got a live wolf all day. So I'm gonna stay positive and we're gonna put some fish in the boat. So just bear with us here. So when we put out the kite, you wanna put it out nice and slow. Have it in gear and just set your drag loose so it's not jerky, like when your thumb, when you're putting it in free spool. So I actually have the reel engaged right now and I just have my drag lightly. You see how that kite's going up nice and smooth. You don't ever want to give it any slack because if you get an inconsistent gust of wind, your kite can fall real easy out of the sky. And when a kite falls, they're super fragile. So you actually got to 
motor over to it. Make sure you don't break any of the, uh, you know, the spokes of the kite. You know, every boat's got its ups and downs. I can tell you right now, since this boat is so wide, wide boats drift real well. And what I mean is, you're not doing this. You know, you don't have a deep V, you're not rocking and rolling, and it is bumpy out here. So there's many nice things about this boat, but that is one thing I immediately noticed, that it drifts really well. All right, so when Victor gets the kite going over there, I'm going to put out a flat line on this side of the boat. And I'm gonna put out a pilchard here. I'm gonna have the flat lines on this side of the boat and the kite is gonna get the baits far away on that side of the boat. So the reason you do the kite is so that you can be fishing both sides of the boat because as we're drifting in towards shore, the wind is blowing us this direction, our baits are going to be drifting away from the boat this way. So you're gonna have baits on both sides of the boat. That's the point of the kite and then flat lines on the other side. Number one, you get your bait on the other side so you can fish more baits, but also, this kite is gonna keep this bait right on top. So he's not gonna see the leader or anything. It's a really nice presentation. Uh, your bait fish is constantly frantic on top of the water. And what I did is I actually bridled him. So you see the hook's not in him. There's a rubber band that I fed with a needle and then it gives your hook as much free range of motion as possible. The reason that's good is because especially when you're fishing a circle hook, you want your um, circle hook to have as much exposure as possible for it to work properly. So this is our rig. You got, I start with a bimini twist. We got 20 pound line. This is the ring that we clip into the kite. You got a bobber, which really just serves as an indicator. A little lead, which helps in getting the bow out of your line. As a lot of times you'll develop a lot of bow in your line between uh, the bow and the bait. And this just gives you a little bit of extra weight to kind of wiggle it out. A little bead to protect your knot snap swivel, I got a little loop knot, and then just like 10 to 15 feet of fluorocarbon leader. I clip it into the kite ring right there, and when a fish hits it with enough tension, it'll actually pop that clip. So now, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have this reel and free spool, and I'm also gonna slowly let out the kite. So as I let out this kite line, it's gonna take my bait naturally with it. You see that? And so I'm just trying to do everything at the same time, make sure my bait's not flying out of the water. The next kite clip is here, and the reason that they don't all go through is you have different size swivels, and based on the swivel, the inner lining of this uh, rig right here matches that size swivel. So now we're gonna get our second bait out. So I'm gonna put a pilchard on here on the short bait. We got a goggle eye on the far bait. Ideally, you want your baits to swim away from the boat. Sometimes they misbehave a little bit and want to come back to the shelter of the boat. So you gotta toss them out there and hope that they start swimming that way. But gogs are usually a little bit stubborn and they like hanging out by the boat. Pilchards usually do their job, but gogs, they, they're a little stubborn. They want to make you work for it. So I got a little rigging needle right here and I'm gonna go right through this pilchard's back. And on the other side of this needle, I have a rubber band. Now what I'm gonna do is, Take my hook, I put it in that rubber band. I'm gonna pull the rubber band through the pilchard, get the rubber band onto the hook, take the rubber band off, and then I go underneath the rubber band one more time, okay? And the other cool thing about kite fishing is you visually see the bite. You guys know how much I love popper fishing or just seeing a fish eat. You can see a sailfish or a wahoo or a kingfish come up and chase your bait. It's just visually so stimulating. We have two gogs on this side, a pilchard, and then this gog right here, I put a little breakaway um, weight on them to suspend them down because we're starting our drift in 300 feet, so we want some baits down there as well. Oh man, we just got a scream and run, guys, on the deep bait. Had a goggle eye out on the bottom, no bites on anything else yet, but that was exciting to hear. It's about noon. Ooh, baby. Oh yeah. It feels good for something to finally happen, you know? It's crazy to think you can go and troll for four hours without a bite. You can have all these live baits out. We've been drifting for about an hour now and it's our first sign of life. Dennis just put a fresh new pair of batteries in my mic. We're good to go. He just, he knew a fish was coming. He's like, Vic, let's change the batteries right now. Something's about to happen. He got the feeling. Quick, 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 we don't want to go slack. So Brooke just took that clip off that allows us to get it down deep into the water column. 
What do we got here? It's a little king, looks like. Yep. Kingfish. There we go. Out of girl. There we go. Oh my gosh! Look at how he's hooked. That is oh wild. Oh my gosh! But the line is in his mouth. What? Yeah. First fish on the twin me. First blood getting in the boat. A nice little kingfish. Great eater size king. Come back? Yeah, I don't see any blood. I don't know what you're talking about. That's no one blood clean yet. fish. <laughs> so you guys see how crazy this kingfish is hooked? What I imagine happening, these fish are built for speed. He comes up, he sees that goggle eye, he might miss it and he might just barely get those two hooks in his belly. He misses it by an inch or two, but that's just insane. These fish was hit with such speed that they can get hooked like that. You got one treble hook, by his butt and then the other one by the anal fin. Perfect eating size right there. There's the first blood on the twin V. There we go, that's what we like. We don't like nice white decks. I'm just really in a rush to get baits back out, so we're gonna put this guy in the fish box and get back to fishing. All right, to your final resting place, buddy. Another thing I love about this boat, look at this. You got two fish boxes in the deck, but you also have this massive lounger slash cooler slash dry storage if you wanted it to be so slash chicken tender <laughs> yeah um we weren't sure if we were going to catch any fish but guess what we got one in the boat now so we're going to take the clean ice and put it in the fish box but yeah this thing is you could fit in there me and brooke could both fit in there <laughs> might show you later <laughs> You on? Yeah, you are. Yeah. yeah. Look at him, look at him, look at him. See him See him moving to the right? He's getting chased. Oh yeah, there's a dolphin on him. Little dolphin, Brick. That's probably what tried to eat your gog. I think he's got it. He does have it, doesn't he? Yeah, we're on. Little dolphin on the kite bait. Oh, that's so sick, seeing all that blue and green. So, yeah. Hook just pulled. What? Not even kidding. Yeah. Right there, coming away. Yeah, hook just pulled. I, I think it was an undersized dolphin, but I could see my pilcher just freaking out on top of the water. And you could see him just pulling one way to the one way to the right, and then you just see this like silhouette of green and blue and yellow, all the beautiful colors of the mahi. And he came up, thrashed it, and I think it's the same thing that tried to eat Brooks Gog. Oh. Sail right? Yeah, Brooks! Yeah! Add it, girl. Good job. Huh? No, he's on, he's on. Oh no, did he pull? Oh, he was on though, wasn't he? Oh man. So Brookie just had a sailfish, but it just spit the hook. It was going ballistic, but that was exciting. We're, we're in like 180 feet and the ocean's coming to life. We got dolphin, we've been seeing flying fish. Uh, Brooke just got that sailfish, so things are looking good. All right, I sent a pilcher down to the bottom. Myron just got the rod. We on, baby. Myron, what you thinking? Oh, well, he's up the line, he's up the line. Baby. He's on there. Here, give me the line. Yeah. Oh, it's a shark. Not what we want. No, remora, which means there's a shark around. This remora swallowed the hook, unfortunately. Sometimes it happens like that. You try everything you can. But that hook was so far down there, I would have done more damage than good by trying to mess with him. Right, oh, my, oh, there's a dolphin on here. Look in the line. That's not. A, that's a keeper fish right there. All right. Just got bit by a dolphin on the long on the gog. This should be a keeper fish right here. 
giving us a little jump. So we just came into all this weed, and I imagine this dolphin's probably in here, picking off all the little shrimp and all the little forage and the sargasm weed right here. Good job, Brooke. Headshots only, huh? Right in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Woo! Another fish in the twin B. A nice little mahi. These guys are beautiful. Check out those colors. He is lit up. One of our prettiest fish here in Florida, like Berkey said. Our second fish on the twin V right here. Gorgeous, gorgeous mahi mahi. We're gonna have kingfish for dinner, we got mahi for dinner, and we got some blood to clean up on the boat, but guess what, I'm not mad about it, because we're eating good. Into the fish box you go. Okay, reel it in, Marvin. Hey, look, he stopped for a little bit. Oh, he got pissed off. What happened? Oh. Pretty sure this is gonna be a shark, but we're gonna fight it like it's a real fish. Whatever it is, it's it's big. At least it woke us up a little bit. Yeah, for real. Definitely a shark. Oh, there it goes. When fish do that and they don't stop, they don't change direction at all, you can't feel a head shake, you can't feel a tail beat, it's usually a shark. No way that could be another shark. Myron, you said you wanted something exciting. I think this is exciting. How about that? Woo! 30 foot leader, little circle hook, and been dropping down the live pilcher. That's not a shark. That might be a real fish. That could be a keeper mutton right there. But uh, it's been it's been pretty slow. This drift is not as productive as the first one. Uh, we had a lot of bites on the last one and we just lost that mystery fish, which I think was a shark, and now whatever Myron's reeling in. Yeah, it's a kingfish. Here, we're, this is going to be sketchy. I'm going to put it in freeze pool. He was wrapped up all in, the, all in the line. Look at that. That's a lucky catch right there with that circle hook. Circle hook perfectly in the corner. Myron saw that rod, and he hopped on it. That fish should not have been caught. Look at that mouthful of teeth. We got no wire leader on there and you get that circle hook perfectly in the corner sometimes you get lucky like that so myron is uh actually here from sundance so a huge shout out to sundance marine like i told you guys this trip wouldn't be possible without them um you guys can check them out they're in pompano beach they put together this whole trip and they are the place to go look for twin bees if you're ever in the market for one so thank you yeah. myron for coming out with us today me and Rick have never really sea traveled a boat before. We've been on a lot of boats and it's always nice to see how things run. And catamarans are completely different than mono hulls, you know? When you come down on a wave, you don't slap. You almost like you're on a cushion of air. Um, I mean, it's rough. We're going straight into it and it's blowing like 15 knots. It's handling. It's just slicing right through the waves. You guys can see it is not calm. Uh, we're running straight into it at about 25 to 30. So we're running back home towards Hillsboro. Gonna pull a few more trips, try to put a few more fish in the boat. We'll see you guys on the other side. All right, well, we just took a beautiful boat ride, even though it's rough. We already have a great day. I got to test out a boat that I'm really interested in. Brookie got to test it out. We got fish for dinner. Everyone's having a good time. We lost some mystery fish that were huge that I don't know what it was, but I'm assuming it was a shark. So it feels like the bait is reeling in really weird. It's not tracking properly, almost as if it like got cut in half, and I'm reeling it in from the side or something, or reeling in two separate pieces, because it does not feel right, I'll tell you that. And that's exactly what happened. He's cut completely in half. And you know what that is? That's a nice clean cut. That's Mr. Wahoo or Mr. Kingfish right there. Like a razor blade right behind the head. Uh, the afternoon bite completely shut off for us. We will see you guys back at the dock to flip some fish. All right, guys, next day, had the kingfish sitting in the cooler on ice. And like I said, this is the perfect, perfect eating size fish. Most people, including myself, prefer to eat kingfish of this size, but these are great. Don't let anyone tell you they're trash. I love them. So the way I like to fillet these, start right here around the peck fin, go to the head, okay? Now we come 
back down here by the tail. Fish that don't have big scales, pelagic fish like dolphin, wahoo, kingfish, what I like to do is actually start from the tail and work my way up towards the head. So my knife right now is on this kingfish's spine and I'm just working up. And the reason I like to do this is they have very sensitive, delicate flesh. The less cutting you do on a fish like this, the better. Because you're gonna start to get tears in your fish, you're gonna start to get just unwanted marks in the fillet and this is gonna give you a better product. And I find coming up from the tail to the head you can really feel your knife on the fish's spine versus outlining it first, okay? Once I do that, I'm just gonna take my knife and kind of get right on top of the kingfish's backbone and separate the meat that's on top of the backbone, break through his pin bones, which are not very big, okay? Using my left hand, like I said, this is a very gentle fish. You don't wanna tear it. I'm gonna take the tip of my knife and go down on the other side of this kingfish's backbone just like so. And now I can do the same thing from kind of the tail half down on the kingfish's spine, working my way up towards the head, revealing that meat. Look at that. Gorgeous flu. And see, here's what I mean about that tearing. If you make one little mistake, they got such sensitive flesh to where you get a little bit of that, but that's no big deal. You see that we left nothing on that kingfish's carcass right there. And this is a eight inch Dexter flexible filet. I really like it because once again, a soft fleshed fish like this, it's nice to have a little flex in your life so you're not manhandling it and just tearing away at meat. And you guys can actually save 20% off all Dexter knives. Use my code Landshark, save yourself some money. Just like the flesh is really delicate, so is the skin. Kingfish have super thin skin, so I find the best way to skin this fish is just like this. Do it in sections. So find the piece of fish you kind of want to serve. So let's say I want to serve pieces like that, okay? I'm gonna take my knife. I'm gonna go down to the skin, but not all the way through. I'm gonna swivel my knife and kind of skin them from the inside out, trailing with my left hand, just like so, and look. You leave a very thin layer of meat on there, but then you don't have any skin on your final product. If you try to go from start to finish from the tail to the head, you can do it, but the chance of ripping through the skin is highly likely because that's just the nature of this fish. I don't know about you, but that's a good looking piece of fish. Very excited to share it with our family tonight, and I will see you guys in the kitchen. Rolling straight into tonight's recipe, we got some roasted carrots, which we're gonna throw in the oven right here. We're gonna do a generous amount of salt and pepper, and then a little bit of sugar. I want these to kind of be like sweetened caramelized carrots, and the sugar is gonna help in that caramelization process and also sweeten them up a little bit. We got branch and vine infused scallion olive oil. You guys can find that link below. You guys have seen it on the channel a lot. I love this company. They make a bunch of infused olive oils, vinegars, honey, just a lot of neat, fun stuff to work with in the kitchen. So we're gonna sprinkle this scallion oil generously on our carrots. Roll these around, make sure everything's kind of coated evenly. They're gonna get a nice crisp outer layer. They're gonna sweeten up. I'm gonna throw these carrots in the oven at 425. We're gonna toast some pine nuts and kind of use them as a garnish a little bit later. Hit them with just a little bit of salt. I'm gonna let these go for like two minutes on a low heat. In here, I have some English peas that I blanched and I'm gonna drain them right now. Now I'm gonna take some heavy whipping cream and we're gonna blend this together and make a pea puree. So I'm gonna go in with about half of this bottle of heavy cream, freshly minced garlic, not too much. You don't wanna overpower it. Good amount of salt. In with our pea puree. Look at that, see how silky smooth that is? That's the consistency you want. You don't want it to be runny and watery. And basically this is done. So I'm just gonna keep this in a little stock pot on low heat with the lid on to just be able to serve it hot, but that's all it is. Purees are such a great way to elevate your dish. It's basically like a grown, it's, it's a fancy way to make baby food look good, look good on the plate. It makes vegetables not boring. Like a lot of people when they think of peas, they're like, I don't want peas for dinner. You gave them a pea puree or a carrot puree, 
the flavors you get are in it are just so much better. It's presented in a different way. We're gonna make a little mayo marinade for the fish. Mayo is something you put on a sandwich or you know whatever, but if you think about it, egg yolk, oil, it's just in the form of fat. So if you're gonna put butter on your fish, olive oil, avocado, it's just a different consistency, a different way to incorporate fat into your fish. And fish is very lean, so you can afford to use a generous amount of fat. These are roasted red peppers. I just went into the magic bullet with a little Duke's mayo. If you're not du using Duke's, you gotta start. If you're using Kraft mayo at home, please do yourself a favor. Go to your nor nearest grocery store, pick up a bottle of Duke's, as well as the rest of our garlic. Some salt. So my buddy, Chef James was here the other day. Got a little bottle of these spicy peppers. I always forget how to pronounce it. Calabrian, Calab Calabrian, Calabrian peppers. These are spicy, so I'm not gonna do too much. I'm gonna do like this much, a spoonful. Kingfish on the left, dolphin on the right. Kingfish is very often overlooked, especially in South Florida. And I think it's because we have just so many good quality fish. Um, people turn their nose up to it, but we do not turn our nose up to pretty much any fish in this house. And you shouldn't either because, you know, life is about variety and enjoying all the ocean has to offer. So the only thing I'm really gonna put on these fish is some salt on one side because our marinade is pretty salty enough. Mayo marinade, and I'm just gonna start basically pouring it on top I'll get it neater and um, make sure that everything's coated on both sides. That's basically gonna serve as the fat for the kingfish. And it's just a really pretty color too, you know? Your fish is gonna have that nice orange red glow to it. One last look at our kingfish. We're gonna put these bad boys in the oven now. All right, and our dolphin. Our roasted, ro ro our roasted carrots are looking good, smelling good. So we're gonna do a little tomato, arugula, salad, salt, pepper, Meyer lemon honey vinegar. Get that acid pop. And then we're gonna go back in with that branch and vine scallion olive oil, some garlic, wake you up. And who doesn't love some freshly shaved Parmesan? Sprinkle that in there too. We're also gonna do a little capers. And by a little, I mean this whole jar. You know what, we're gonna add some red onion. I got some red onion left over. And anyone who thinks you can't use the root of an herb, it's just not true. The roots are just as delicious as the leaves. Just slice them a little bit thinner because they are a little bit tougher of a texture. So some fresh flat leaf parsley going in there. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Fish. I'm gonna go to the biggest piece. If you're cooking different thicknesses of fish, always go to the thickest one to check for doneness. We are gonna go down with our English pea puree. Okay, that's like my perfect consistency right there. Don't want it to be too, too uh, watery or smooth where it's separating. So let's go down with our roasted carrots. Now our toasted pine nuts right on top of that pea puree. I like it when people can experience different textures in their dinner. So you want something crunchy, something soft, savory flavor, sweet flavors, you know, keep that palate surprised the whole time. Now we got our tomato arugula salad going down. All right, look at that. Kingfish coming out of the oven, super tender and gonna be so delicious. Look at that steam coming off that fish. Okay, I'm gonna start everyone off with one piece of kingfish, just like that. Man, I love when a dish is pretty. It just like sets up the mood for your dining experience. I mean, at the end of the day, the flavor is the most important thing in the dish, but if you can make something look good before someone even eats it and puts it in their mouth, I think it just makes it their experience that much better. Well, I'm thinking a lot over here <laughs> about how hard you guys fished yesterday to catch this dinner. I know you left left the dock at seven and didn't get back till after seven. Mm -hmm. so 
I have um, kingfish and mahi, and I started with the kingfish, and it was just tasty. And I expected the dolphin to be much better because everybody loves dolphin. And I dug into the dolphin, and I'm like, wait a second, do I actually like the kingfish better than the <laughs> dolphin? You know, who who does that? You know, everybody likes dolphin more than the kingfish, but. Side by side, cooked the same way. It's, it's almost like the kingfish has a little more flavor. Oh yeah. You call it a $50 plate, like if you went to a fancy restaurant, but that's just what this costs. You don't get out of there for 50 bucks. You know, you have a drink or two, and sides, you know, if you get this kind of fancy stuff, everything's a la carte. So you get a side, a couple of drinks, a salad, you and your wife don't get out of there for 200 bucks. And guess what? This plate, free. <laughs> <laughs> I put a piece of mahi on everyone's plate because he had given everyone kingfish. And I was like, okay, this is your kingfish. This is your mahi. So when people have been talking about what's better or what they thought between the two, that's because I snuck that other piece on there. But I couldn't necessarily say I liked one over the other, but this entire plate was absolutely delicious. Victor killed it. All these flavors were so, so good together. And we had a great day on the boat and to share our fresh catch with everyone was so great. We have some leftover kingfish and we're gonna be bringing it to Sundance tomorrow to give to Myron so that he can enjoy some with his family as well. Mm -hmm. 10 out of 10 would recommend top tier between the plating, presentation, all the complex flavors. Uh, it had so many elements that I love. I love pine nuts, I love capers, um, arugula, like everything just went so well together. It was a masterpiece. Well done, Vic. Thanks, Jed. Amazing. That was a real Jed dish. First of all, the presentation was just so beautiful. The colors and how it was executed was just phenomenal. Second, like the flavoring on how everything meshed well was incredible. I'm like, speechless but also so proud. I don't think you guys can cook like he does, so I'm like, I don't even recommend you try. <laughs> but like, this was so good. <laughs> oh no, I could do it. There's no, I yeah, that, never no that's the truth. Don't even try this at home, you know? <laughs> Yeah. My dad was saying that how much this would cost and it cost him nothing, but it's it's honestly almost priceless. Like to get this kind of food, to get this many dishes where everyone agrees that they all love their food, like that doesn't happen that often. And um and it's also like I, I think it's um showing a lot of respect to the things you catch when you really try to push them to this limit so people can enjoy a dish like this and it's something that people might go out and catch a dolphin or a kingfish and they might even complain about catching the kingfish but when you turn to something like this that's like that's really honoring the fish and like showing a lot of respect to the people that join your table it's uh it it's it might be free for us but it, it is uh it's priceless wonderfully said fisher that yeah, was that great was. that was great Two thumbs up. Hmm. Um, even uh, the carrots. A lot of people don't like carrots, but Victor made those carrots taste delicious. Um, I agree with everyone that the kingfish stood out with more. There's a little bit of taste here for some reason, but it's delicious. Everything in there is Thank you guys for joining us. It's like, there's no better feeling. You know when you catch a good fish and you're like really happy, when you, it's not the compliments, it's the fact that you made something that so many people can enjoy and you have a table full of people and you bring everyone together that's the awesome part about it not for the compliments the fact that i get to feed eight people and everyone enjoyed it is what i live for and that's what i love and that's what i want you guys to do and i appreciate the compliment gabby but everyone <laughs> everyone can do this at home <laughs> cooking should be something that you know you can challenge yourself but it's not that hard when you break it down you just build on the bases and just keep at it but uh yeah Big thank you to Myron, the guys at Sundance, everyone who put this trip together. Big thank you to Twin V. Hopefully, fingers crossed, you know, we might be in a new Twin V soon. 
I will keep you guys posted on that. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.